Hello, I'm Luis Moscoso, your representative in the 1st Legislative District, which includes the cities of Bothell, Montlake, Terrace, and Briar, and other unincorporated areas to the east of them. We've got a lot of things to do today, so let's get going. We're at the North Shore School District Secondary Academy for Success, and I'm talking to Mike who is the instructor in this program. Could you tell us a little bit more about what you do? I teach sustainable engineering and design, a new CTE course offered here in the school district. There is a huge need, I would say, for students to kind of see themselves in the future what they can be doing. Career integrity education really provides that avenue for career exposure, especially within this class. Our big emphasis is green jobs, which is the fastest growing segment of the job market Market right now and exposing students to what opportunities lay ahead is really important. Yeah, my understanding, this isn't just a little niche area of industry. This is something that is going to be encompassing a lot of, of work and that we need to do a lot more to emphasize that. And, and thinking of that, what can the legislators do to help this uh, move ahead forward as fast as we need to do? Yeah. Number one, I would say a need from state legislators is just that continual push for funding for schools. And funding just leverages opportunities, just like in a regular business. And so funding allows me to take my students on field trips so they can go and see green jobs that are available in this area right now. It allows me to take them to conferences that just expand their horizons on uh, this growing industry. Um, it's just one example of how funding can either open or close doors for opportunities. One of the many projects they've been showing me here in the classroom is this. So Mike, could you explain what this is? Sure. One of our big themes for the school year was looking at transportation. and Obviously there's big issues of transportation in the greater Puget Sound region. So we had students take a close look at pedestrian traffic and vehicular traffic and mass transit and uh, figuring out how that's going to look in 2030, 2050 in this region. And so one of the projects that spawned from that thinking was a solar charging bike station for electric bikes. And so I've got one of my students, Nate, who can explain kind of the inner workings of the project. So this project, like Mike said, was for charging motor bikes or anything that can take a charge. It uses solar panels to charge it and we have our power control, we have the inverter and the breakers in case we get too much power or too little power it just cuts it off so nothing gets fried. We also use this project to power some music during our community service project at 21 acres in Woodville. I heard that this was part of a competition. What was the overall program that you competed in? Yeah, so there's a big statewide competition out at WSU that's held in the spring every year called Imagine Tomorrow. And so we took five teams out there last year, um, and they have put together a variety of projects, either focusing on transportation, consumer products, etc. And so one of our teams that went out there focusing on consumer products and greening that up that industry up actually got first prize oh, for great. the congressional district. So, wow. yeah. Congratulations. Great. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me to your school, Vicki. Could you introduce yourself and explain the, your, your role here? Sure. I'm Vicki Puckett, and I'm the principal of all the alternative programs for the North Shore School District, and that covers a variety of programs um, for students who need alternative learning experiences. Basically, at SAS, it stands for Secondary Academy for Success, Students get to be involved in a variety of hands-on learning kinds of experiences. So for instance, career and technical education is a very, very primary program in this school because many of the students get to go out in the field and get a sense of what it feels like to be in the workforce and to develop technical skills to work and support onto that next level, whether they choose to go on to four-year college or whether they choose to go on to community college or whether they choose to go on to technical field. Um, a lot of people may not know that while our school district has high statistics of students who go on to a four-year college, many of them come out not being able to get jobs in their area. Right. So technical education is a really critical piece in our, in our component in our educational process. How many students are here now and how many do you anticipate could also be served once people realize what's happening? We have uh, approximately 160 students being served currently right now and we can serve up to 180 with our current staffing. Our classroom ratios are about eight 18 to 1, so it allows students like, um, or teachers like Mike Juarez, who you just spoke to, to be able to work more intimately with students, more one-to-one -one with a classroom of 18 students. Great. 
We're standing in front of this beautiful wall. Could you explain a little bit about what this is? One of the grants that we received from the state allowed for the students to create artwork with a professional artist in the community who was able to show them some of the ideas around the world of art. And in front of you, you see some of the individual student pieces of art that were created along with the artist. And it was done collaboratively with the artist in groups and also with the artist one-on-one. -on -one. My name is Damon Schooneman. I am the director of our career and college readiness programs here in the North Shore School District. My responsibility is to support our programs across the district. That means uh, supporting our teachers with equipment and supplies and the needs necessary to educate our students in the high demand fields of study. I was able to sponsor and help pass a strategic planning bill for career and technical education. We know that students in today's workforce need at least two years of post-secondary education to be successful in the workplace and the programs that we are developing now along with this house bill will provide us with a seamless roadmap to um, develop our programs but also articulate with our local technical and community colleges to provide uh, our students with a roadmap, a seamless roadmap uh, to success in high demand fields of uh, uh, work. Thank you, Damon. This is very exciting. It's exactly what we need in the state and in my district here. Let's work together in the future. That sounds great. I'm looking forward to it. We're at Alexis Cafe in downtown Bothell, and this is our owner, Lee. I have had this restaurant for 17 years, and I have been a very active member in downtown Bothell. I've enjoyed this time. I've been in the business for 21 years as a cafe owner and a caterer, and I bought this building in 2005, so I have a lot of pride in downtown, and been very active in many committees, the chamber and the downtown redevelopment. I stay abreast of all the new information. The city and I work together. I have access to the top from Bob Stowe to Terry Bacciuello and I can ask questions whenever. Um, they keep us in, uh, involved in um, the next level of project and I try to be a vessel of um, communication for downtown. How do you see the historic Main Street here fitting into the Crossroads project and the boulevard that's coming up? I feel there's a very strong possibility that there's going to be a lot of brick in the new projects from the new city hall to the 18 acres out in the school district's old property plus the Crossroads project. I think we're going to keep the feel of small town yet create jobs and create retail for a lot of the people that live here. Well, you're sure on top of a lot of things that are happening. Thanks for taking the time to, to share this with us You're today. welcome. Okay. Thanks. Hello, we're here with Lynn Asman, who's the owner of Framerite and the K-Win Gallery in downtown Bothell. And I understand you're also the chair of the Downtown Action Committee with the Greater uh, Bothell Chamber of Commerce. Can you tell us more about what's going on downtown? The Downtown Action Committee was formed to um, work with the city for the revitalization of uh, the historic part of Bothell, which is Main Street, to retain its flavor and revitalize it to be more inviting, more retail friendly, more customer friendly, and to make it a more vital center for the community. I worked on two pieces of legislation, the Boulevard Project and also the 522 Crossroads realignment there. How do you see that tying into Main Street and the other new vision for Bothell? Well, it's going to physically, literally, bring more people into town. It'll be easier to get here, it'll be easier to park here. And any time that you remodel or revitalize an area, people are always curious about it. So we'll get a lot of people coming in to, to shop and eat in our restaurants and stuff. That's, that's great. Thank you yeah. so much for sharing that with us. Hello, we're down at uh, Bothell City Hall with City Manager Bob Stroud. Would you please tell us what you see happening for Bothell in the near future? You know, there's some exciting projects happening in Bothell, and one of the most exciting is our downtown redevelopment. Uh, since April of 2010, we've broken ground in $80 million out of $150 million of planned infrastructure investments that our economists predict will leverage $650 million in private sector investments. That includes over 840 temporary jobs and over 1,300 permanent jobs that will really assist our economy in, um, in the future. 
Well, it's nice to hear about those jobs. How does that all come together? Yeah, some of the main infrastructure improvements will include RSR 522, which we call our Crossroads Project. That'll improve mobility and safety on SR 522, but it'll also create two new blocks of retail opportunity. It includes a boulevard development on SR 527, as well as the place that we're having the interview today in City Hall block, planned for a new City Hall facility along with mixed-use development on wow. this block. That's really wonderful. How does state government help you in the work that you're doing in Bothell? You know, they've been a real partner as well as you've been a great partner for Bothell by securing the additional funds that we needed this last legislative session for the Public Works Trust Fund. But the state's been along with us in terms of providing a local infrastructure financing tool award, which was a significant amount of money that we're putting towards our SR522 project. So they've been a, a good partner. Well, it's fun working with you too. Thanks again. Thank you. Thanks for coming on the tour today. I hope you're as excited as I am to see some of the things that are going on in the district. This is my office right at 183rd and 102nd in downtown Bothell. Why don't we go inside and meet my legislative assistant. Well, welcome to my office here in downtown Bothell. This is my legislative assistant, Michelle meeker Penn. She's the first person you'll either call or talk to or email when you're trying to reach me. Now, I'm not always here all the time. I could be out with constituents or doing a tour or perhaps at a conference somewhere, but we certainly want to hear from you. This is the first ledge office that we've had in the district for almost 10 years, and so it's wonderful to meet you folks and to have you come in or call us as whenever you can. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks again. Thanks.